Believe it or not, stargates, portals, interdimensional doorways that open into supernatural realms are real. The discovery and control of the specific locations on Earth where these gates exist is one of the most classified deep black operations conducted by military and intelligence organizations around the world. The sorcery associated with accessing and opening these gates was the most dangerous and destructive knowledge given to mankind by fallen angels. Legends of gateways and portals opening to both heavenly and hellish realms frequently appear in the tablets, scrolls, and scripts of the ancient world, including both the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. We wanted to examine whether or not it is a biblical premise that there are specific locations on the earth where there are gateways or doorways, vortexes, that connect supernaturalism with the physical world. And once we started looking at whether or not that is biblical, it was amazing how it just kind of opened up in the scripture. I mean, now we started seeing everywhere, right? Genesis 28, Jacob has a vision and he sees, now in the King James Version of the Bible, it's called a ladder. But the Hebrew there is very interesting in that it seems to describe a spiral. So was it like a spiral staircase? That's what some people have suggested, but others have said a vortex, which happens to be kind of an international symbol that you find across all cultural barriers as a symbol of a vortex, right? But in any case, Jacob sees angels ascending and descending from heaven. He comes out of that vision. He is so shook up because this is so vivid that he gets out anointing oil. He's trembling, right? And he anoints the entire place, but he says something very important. Now, a lot of people say that he said, this is the house of God. But if you read that in the Hebrew, that's not what he says. He says, there is a gate here to the house of God. There is a gateway, a doorway here. Well, we found that once you started thinking about that concept, it spanned from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Jesus arrives, he's talking about the windows of heaven and how from henceforth you'll see the windows of heaven open and angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It's an Old and New Testament principle. Now we also found that like the Apache Indian have done, the scripture often combines the location of these gateways to mountainous regions. Remember how Moses, whenever he's going to meet with God, he has to go to the top of the Mount Sinai. Look at how when Jesus returns, it says his feet will touch the top of the Mount of Olives, and then he will descend down to the earth. In the apocryphal book of Enoch, it talks about the 200 watchers that descended in the days of Jared, but how do they come down? They come down from the top of Mount Hermon, down into the valley of the plains, and then they begin their illegal activity. Jesus later, years later, is standing at the base of Mount Hermon. He is standing there with his disciples in Caesarea Philippi, and that's the location where the Greeks, by that time, had built mystical doorways into the base of that mountain and actually in commemoration of the legends that dated back to the watchers descending on that mountain. And it's there where Jesus is standing with his disciples and he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. In the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation, a star falls from heaven to the earth. He is given the key to the bottomless pit. When he opens the abyss, a great smoke arises and all hell breaks loose. And up out of this gateway of the earth come these terrible insectoids that begin tormenting unrighteous humanity, right? That's on the, on the face of the earth. Many people, though, don't know that there's something very intriguing in that same chapter. Chapter 9 of uh, Revelation ends by saying something extraordinary. It says that those people who are being tortured by these insectoids, these transgenic beings that come up out of the underworld, who have a king over them called Abaddon or Apollyon, it says, and yet they repented not of their sorceries. And the a Greek word there, sorcery, is pharmakia. Now what is pharmakia? In the biblical context, and the reason it was forbidden, 
a pharmakia is the use of technology and sorcery for the express purpose of opening a doorway which God has closed in order to put ourselves in contact with what is behind it. It's the use of sorcery to open metaphysical doorways, gateways. So imagine this, that in Revelation 9, where the gates of the earth open and these terrible things come up and start torching humanity, it ends by saying, and yet they repented not of their pharmakia, of their effort to open doorways to the metaphysical world. So it's almost as if God is saying, you asked for it, you got it. We are approaching another Tower of Babel moment on the earth. Another Nimrod is arising. The rebellion and sorcery of the Sumerians is reigniting in the hearts of men. Soon, forbidden gates will be opened and the man of sin will appear. Even now, theological foundations are being laid in anticipation of the arrival of a superior alien race. The fishhead priests of Babylon are preparing to fulfill their occult destiny and welcome from heaven the return of the gods. Those who control the past determine the future. The reality of the pre-flood age has been concealed, covered over and covered up, so that the truth of prehistory will remain forgotten, and the world will be doomed to repeat it. God said that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The great deception of the future will take advantage of the ignorance of the past. Only the truth can prepare us for the lie that's coming. For thousands of years, Luciferians have been envisioning the time in which we now live. The consummation of their ancient plan is finally drawing near. The lost knowledge of the Watchers has been recovered. Like Osiris, the Golden Age will be resurrected and fallen angels will lead mankind in one last insurrection. History is being repeated. The days of Noah are returning, and men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth.